Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, this is a question that I get asked quite a bit on stream, which is, Anthony, all of your YouTube thumbnails look the same. What are you doing to make them? And what sort of what sort of magic is going on there? But yeah, I'm gonna explain those today and uh, kind of <laughs> double double whammy this one and generate the thumbnail for the video I just recorded. So we're gonna get two things out of this. Uh, but yeah, let's jump into that. Um, so the first clue to the magic is I have a repository on GitHub, which is github.com slash code slash thumbnails, which actually contains all of the code that I use to generate thumbnails. And um, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check out the code, but I don't, <laughs> not sure why you would. Uh, but anyway, the way this works is a combination of a couple of technologies. Uh, the first is I define all of my thumbnails in HTML. I use a browser to render them, and then I use a technology called Selenium, particularly WebDriver, to scrape the screen. So let's kind of show how all of that works. So let's take the thumbnail for the episode that I'm about to uh, about to upload to YouTube, and that's in the Explains um, Explains series. And you'll notice that there's it's basically just some HTML here. And if we open it up, explains.html uh, in Firefox, just to sort of demo it. Oh, let's resize that a little bit. Uh, you'll notice that it looks somewhat like my thumbnails, and you can actually like resize it around, and you'll see that like at various sizes, this HTML file doesn't really work properly. It's somewhat responsive, but I haven't put the full like effort to make this quite correct yet. And I actually have a little uh, shortcut here to make the size of this window 1080p. Uh, it of course doesn't quite work because um, the the view width of this window is less than 1080p because you know, I'm recording a 1080p video for you guys. Uh, but yeah, it's basically just some HTML, um, a bunch of CSS to align stuff properly. Although sometimes that alignment doesn't work quite properly. And we'll show that in a second. Oh, this actually opens a pop-up window. That's how it works. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's edit this, this thumbnail for the next video, which will be episode eight. And then <laughs> this meta video that I'm recording right now will be episode nine. Um, but we talked about in episode eight, we talked about, what do we talk about? Uh, oh yes. Python's blank, uh, except, and usually I have to keep these super, super short. Uh, because, well, <laughs> you'll see the problem in a second. Um, and unfortunately, I'm currently like manually arranging these. I would love if somebody that was better at HTML could like <laughs> help me fix this so like it auto sizes the fonts or like does some fancy stuff like that, but this works well enough and I haven't bothered to invest time to fix it. But uh, once I set up the HTML for that, I run this make screenshot.py file, which will look at the implementation of that in a second um, and it takes a while because it's it's literally opening my hands aren't doing anything here it's literally opening a browser and you can kind of see that it blinked there um, and finished and then it will save out a screenshot file a png of that uh, of that thing so you can see here's here's the uh, thumbnail and you can see we've got a bit of a problem here this was not <laughs> this is not intentional I was actually hoping that it worked right the first time but it definitely did not um, and you'll see like we word wrapped because this text blob hit the edge over here um, and we could fix this in the browser and like you know fiddle it there but <laughs> what I usually do is just modify the offsets until it works so in this case the left was too far over so if we change this to like I don't know 24 and rerun it hopefully that will will fix this um, the nice thing about the image viewer in in um uh, Ubuntu is this auto updates. Um, did it auto update? Did it change? <laughs> is 24 not enough? Let's try 20. We'll, we'll, we'll watch this to make sure that it adjusts. It's possible that I'm modifying. Oh yeah, there we go. So now it kind of fits here. Um, I could also probably move this word down here and that would probably fit a little bit better. But you can see it's a little bit tedious. I wish it was less tedious. Uh, let's try this instead. Instead of 20, let's guess at 24. But it's a lot of guess and check right now. 
<laughs> but, you know, eventually it comes to a result which looks pretty good. Ah, oh, now we're overwriting that. Okay, so 26. But anyway, I'll fiddle with that and get it exactly correct later. It's not super important. Um, oh, we just tried to run nano in the in the browser that it opened. It's still not right. But anyway, uh, the way that this works is there's this make screenshot.py which has a bunch of code and we'll go over kind of the basics of it. Uh, because, you know, <laughs> you don't actually care about too much of the implementation detail here. Uh, but we're using a package called Selenium. Uh, I, you know, just pip install Selenium and uh, we're particularly using the Firefox flavor of the web driver. There's web drivers for all sorts of different browsers, even like mobile browsers and um, other esoteric stuff as well. I think there might even be a web driver for like text-based driver or text-based browsers. I don't even remember. I used to know all this stuff. This is what I did a lot when I worked at Yelp is I spent a lot of time improving the web driver suite, which automatically tested uh, Yelp's websites and made sure that they continue to work. Well, some set of the tests, like, for, of course, unit tests and other stuff, but I digress. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, and this has actually been improved in the latest version of WebDriver. I haven't updated in a long time. There's actually a context manager for this function now, so I don't have to define my own context manager. Uh, but basically, you, you know, create a browser, and when you're done with it, you call quit on it. <laughs> it, it basically works. And you can see if we put a little breakpoint here... And we run this script again. Uh, we can actually interact with that browser programmatically. And uh, <laughs> of course, we need to install Future Breakpoint, which is a package that I made to backport the breakpoints built into older versions of Python. It's new in Python 3.7, but apparently this virtual end is Python 3.6. So let's try that again with our breakpoint properly set up. And you'll see that we open up a browser and it's kind of just paused here and we're sitting at this breakpoint here. Um, and we'll see a couple of functions that we, we use here. So the first one that you would use in almost every test is driver.get and this will cause it to navigate to a page. So we'll just do n to step over that so you can see that it opened up this particular URL. Um, we can interact with this page in a bunch of different ways. Uh, I remember the API here. Is this it? Uh, okay, there are no h1s on the page, but yeah, there's like a find element by CSS selector and start an h2. Surely there's a span. Okay, we, we get back a span, uh, um, and you can like ask what its text is. Oh, it's not a method. <laughs> but anyway, you can you can uh, basically interact with this. You can click on stuff. So if you wanted to, you could. Click. Of course, clicking on that span actually does nothing, but uh, you, you could imagine something like that, or like where you need to interact with the browser. Uh, but you can also like write assertions and stuff. But I'm I'm only using Selenium here to take a screenshot. And so if we um, step through this, actually, there's there's one little subtlety to here. here. Uh, Selenium can resize the window, but uh, it uses the outer size of the windows, so you can't actually like properly size it to exactly a thumbnail size. So I cheat a little bit and I use uh, JavaScript to open a window that's exactly the right size. And uh, WebDriver can run a JavaScript script inside your inside your page. Um, so if we step over that, uh, you'll see that we opened up a new window here. And this window, the inner size is exactly 720p, which is what YouTube suggests for your thumbnails. Um, we then do kind of a tricky thing uh, where we decide which window handle to grab because Selenium has a, con uh, like a concept of which is the current active window and we'll interact with that. It also has a thing for iframes and other stuff like that, but there's no frames here so we don't have to do the same dance. Uh, but basically what we're doing here is we're trying to figure out, okay, there's some number of windows, in this case two windows, and we know that we want to find the window that's not us. Um, they might have fixed this by now, but it used to be an unordered list here, and so you would just kind of have to guess which was the window. And so this is this is a way to deterministically get the window that just opened. Uh, so you can see we switch to that handle, we run save screenshot, uh, and then we 
and then we're done. That exited everything out. So all this, all the script really wanted to do was save that screenshot, and um, yeah, that's how it works. So that's that's how I generate my thumbnails. I also use this to generate the little like panels that you see on Twitch, or uh, my offline page is also generated in the same way. But yeah, all all that's automated, and I really just you know fiddle with some HTML to make that work. But anyway, hopefully this explains. <laughs> <laughs> how I make my thumbnails and hopefully you found this interesting but thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one